special thanks to Motion Array for sponsoring today's video. In this video, I'm gonna show you five ways that you can take your video editing to the next level inside Premiere Pro. Let's dive in. So the first way that you can level up your video editing inside Premiere Pro is by utilizing the AI features. There's a lot of AI tools inside Premiere Pro that you can use to speed up your video editing. Right now I have my podcast pulled up and one tool I love to use inside Premiere Pro to help speed up the process of editing a podcast episode is their transcription feature. If you go up to Window Text, you can go to the Transcript tab. You can choose to transcribe your clips in your timeline, and Premiere Pro will automatically list the transcript for you, and you can make edits as if you're editing a Word document. Once it's complete transcribing your sequence, you'll see the script loaded here, and from here you can easily cut out all the silences, for example, which is one thing I love to do. So if you navigate to the Filters button, you can go to Pauses. You can see the pauses are selected with these little dots, you can easily go to delete and then click delete all. You'll see that the edits are reflected in your timeline. So in a matter of just a few seconds, we were able to cut out all the pauses inside our timeline. There's a lot of other AI features to explore as well in the latest version of Premiere Pro. One of the new features I like to use is the search panel. If you go up to window, search, you'll see that we have the search panel and Premiere Pro uses AI to search your project for media assets. So we can easily type in what we're looking for. For example, maybe a logo, and it'll generate all the logos that I imported in my Premiere Pro project. For example, my podcast logo appears and I can easily click and drag this to my timeline. And it makes navigating your project a lot easier. Another way that you can level up your video editing inside Premiere Pro is to use creative transitions. And for this, I like to use Motion Array. Motion Array is a marketplace with tons of video assets like video templates, stock footage, photos, music, and sound effects. And what's really nice is that they launched an update to their media library directly inside Premiere Pro, making it very easy to add templates and transitions directly inside your Premiere Pro project. Inside Premiere Pro, with Motion Array installed, you can go up to Window, Extensions, Motion Array Library. And you'll see the library appear. You can search for templates and transitions. If we go over to the Transitions tab, you can easily add different transitions. You can search for them inside the search bar. When you find a pack that you like, you can easily just click on it and you can hover your cursor over the different transitions to preview them. So for example, if you find one that you like, what you can easily do is just click and drag this in between your two video clips here. And this will add that transition in between your clips. When we click and play this back, you can see what we have. You can easily click on this transition and just like any other transition inside Premiere Pro, you can navigate to the effects controls you can change the different settings, you can make it longer. And what's really nice is since this library is directly built inside Premiere Pro, it makes adding transitions and templates very easy inside Premiere Pro. Now, in addition to creative transitions, you can add motion graphics as well. And for this, I still like using Motion Array's library. From the Motion Array library, you can navigate to the templates section. You have different filters that you can choose from. For example, you can choose topography and titles and search for some nice titles that you can add to your project. For example here, maybe I wanna add a lower third for my guest to introduce him. What I can easily do is just type in lower thirds. You can see lower third graphics populate inside the search panel. When I find a pack that I like, I can easily just click on it. But once again, you can hover over them to preview them. And when you find something you like, you can easily just click and drag this to your project to add the lower third. And it works like any other template inside Premiere Pro. You can easily click on it. We'll exit the Motion Array library for now. And we can go over to our Properties panel by going up to Window Properties. We can click and drag this Properties panel to the left here, and we can make our changes to our text. And with a few minor adjustments, we've added in our lower third text directly inside Premiere Pro. Now, another way that you can level up your video editing directly inside Premiere Pro is to add cinematic looks. And Motion Array is great for this because they have several LUTs that you can use to color grade and add cinematic looks to your footage. From the Motion Array website, we can easily go to the LUTs category. And from the filters on the left side, we can click on cinematic. We can hover over the different thumbnails to preview how the look will affect our footage. And when we find something that we like, we can easily just click on it and click download to download it to our computer. And then we can install the LUT directly inside Premiere Pro. Inside Premiere Pro, we can switch our workspace from editing to color to bring up the color grading controls. And then with the clip selected inside your timeline, you can go to the creative tab and next to look, you can click on the drop down, go to browse and navigate to the LUT that you just downloaded from Motion Array. Click open. You can see we've added a nice look to our footage. We have different controls to control the intensity of it. We want to introduce faded film and different options. 
Motion Ray also has several plugins that you can add to your clips as well, and some of them create a nice cinematic look. For example, if we navigate to our effects panel and we go under the video effects category, we can scroll down and go to Motion Ray Color Grading, and we can add a CineStyle plugin effect to our clip by clicking and dragging it to our clip here. And inside effects controls, we can easily scroll down and change a lot of these effects to get a really nice look here. But these are just some of the ways that you can explore to add a cinematic look to your footage. If you're interested in getting Motion Ray, you can get two additional months for free using my link down in the video description. Thank you Motion Ray for sponsoring today's video. Now let's take a look at the next way you can level up your video editing inside Premiere Pro. So far, we've taken a look at visual ways to level up your video editing inside Premiere Pro, but let's now focus on the audio. There's several effects you can use to make your audio pop inside Premiere Pro to make it stand out and sound very clear. One of my favorite effects to use inside Premiere Pro is the parametric equalizer. Now, what I recommend doing is switching to the audio workspace. So if you go back up to the workspaces button, you can go to the audio. This will bring up the essential sound panel as well as the audio track mixer. Now what's nice about the audio track mixer is that it applies effects to all the clips in your timeline. So if you remember from before, we have all these clips and you can add effects to individual clips, but since we've made so many cuts to our podcast episode, it makes more sense to add effects directly on the track itself. That way it's applied to all of our clips. So to do that, what you can do is click on this drop down menu and you can see that we have the different audio tracks listed in these columns here. If we scroll down to the bottom, you can see audio track one is here, audio track two is here. And how you add effects is that you can click on this drop down menu and you can see the different categories here. For parametric equalizer, you can go to filter and EQ and search for parametric equalizer, click on it. And to make adjustments to the effect, you can easily double click on it to bring up this controls window here. And a good preset that I like to start off with, we click on this drop down, is Vocal Enhancer. What this does is it boosts the highs of your audio, so it makes it nice and crisp and clear. I usually bring it back down a little bit by clicking and dragging this down. It doesn't need to be that high, but it also boosts the natural lows in the audio clip while also taking out some of the low rumbles. And if we click and play this, I'm gonna toggle on and off the effect by clicking on this bypass effect button at the top left so you can hear what it sounds with and without it. So this is with it. On is um, we added in Final Cut Pro. And this is without it. So, cause we don't, cause we didn't go to, I don't know. We just, that's what we, it was 300 bucks in 20, 2013 and it wasn't like, it didn't have the Adobe cloud back then. So it's just what we started with. So I think one of the things that always scared me was like, well, John edit someone. You can see it just adds some nice clarity to his voice. Now you may notice it's still a little bit low and another effect I like to use is called dynamics to bring up the audio. This is essentially a compressor effect. And to search for that, you can click on the drop down, go to amplitude and compression and go to dynamics. Once again, you can double click on this effect to bring up the controls and next to compressor, click on the box and this will enable this column here. And what you can easily do is change up the ratio. I usually do either two or three. And then for the makeup down below, I usually add maybe six to nine. I'm gonna do nine for this one. And you can also add a limiter as well. So if you want it to not clip, you can check on this box here and make sure that it doesn't clip past negative six. And when we play this back, you can see that we brought up the audio quite a bit. We can expand our audio meters at the bottom right to kind of preview our meters here. If we have to edit something or what if we do if we have to transfer files? And I think the best thing to do if you're a business, I'll say business owner, then editor. If you're a business owner, give. So you can see that brings it up quite a bit. Now those are only five ways that you can take your video editing to the next level. If you're looking for other ways to get faster inside Premiere Pro, there's several tutorials on my channel. I will leave one that you might like linked right up there. Feel free to go check that one out. But that does it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.